It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 1746, I'm a Bit Slow, by Colin Wright of exilelifestyle.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Monday and welcome back to Optimal Living Daily, or the OLD podcast, where I read to you from some of the best blogs I can find and get permission from, mostly covering personal development and minimalism on this show. We cover a bunch of other topics in the Optimal Living Daily podcast network, which includes four other shows. Definitely subscribe to those if you like this one. Just search for Optimal Living Daily to find them. For now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. I'm a Bit Slow by Colin Wright of exilelifestyle.com. Delightfully slow. I turn the handle 90 degrees to the right, relishing the slight resistance offered by the oiled metallic housing. Next comes the knob. It's more art than science. Too little and the gas won't come on, but too far and it won't be enough to light. I gently twist it into the correct position with the ease of constant practice. I pull the small box down from the shelf, noting the trio of ducks on the front and giving them a wink. My index finger slides the main compartment from the outer shell and I reach in to pull out one small match, a redheaded gift from Prometheus. Whiff, spiffed. The match is lit. I know that if I go with my gut and rush the flame down toward the gaseous plume below, The fire will go out before making contact with the invisible fuel. I ease my hand toward the stove. Whooshed. A quick puff of breath is enough to put out the match and the blackened stump is set on the granite countertop long enough to make sure the last of the fiery heat has died down. The scene has been set. From here I can make pasta, or some tea, or heat up a veggie burger. The world is my oyster. Fear of Sloth. Lighting my gas stove is an activity I've come to appreciate because it is a delightfully slow process. It only takes 15 seconds or so, but that's a lifetime compared to the instantaneous results of an electric range. This is a big deal because it's never been easy for me to slow down. Even when I know rationally that taking a smooth, structured approach to some problems will yield better results, it's usually all I can do to stop and think things over before rushing into a solution going with my first response and fixing things if they go wrong along the way. It's a trained response. I've always been able to reason my way through problems without taking the time to check references or make sure all the ducks are in a row. My study skills are shot for the same reason. No practice, no skills. I do know from all the books I've read and advice I've been given that slowing down and taking the time to think, be inspired, and stay sane is important. I've made it part of my project to take more time to do things, stop and smell the roses, and see if positivity ensues. Mixed results. Thus far, it's been a mixed bag. I've been able to retain information better by slowing down and taking the time to consciously identify relationships between new things I learn and the knowledge I already possess. I've also taken the time to really get to know people and convert more colleagues into friends rather than allowing them to languish in that social purgatory of colleagedom. On the other hand, I've been going nearly insane trying to figure out what to do when I'm trying not to do so much. I'll find myself sitting on my bed, laptop closed, but close by, a bewildered expression on my face. What else is there? Master plan. That's what I intend to find out. I have no problem taking my 20 minutes of awesome every day and anything that has an identifiable goal is easy to work into my system, but to just move more slowly or do nothing at all goes against my wiring. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. Most people that have recommended that I slow down have done so with the hope that I will become less stressed and more in touch with myself. What I've noted, however, is that I get more stressed trying to fit myself to that mold than when I'm happily moving along with some project or another, reading a book or talking to someone new about what they do and how they live. These activities have more meat to them than what most self-help gurus would want in a relaxation exercise but I've come to realize that my needs are different. That being said, I'm very glad I tried. So glad, in fact, that I feel I'll be even less stressed doing what I do because I know I'm not missing out on what's on the other side of the fence. The grass over there sure is green, but I've always preferred pavement anyway, and I've got a beautiful parking lot on my side. And this doesn't mean that I can't plant small patches of grass where necessary. Where the slowdown tactic works without negatively impacting my mentality, I'll embrace it wholeheartedly. Where the trade-off is not worth it, I'll continue to look for better ways to find balance. Square peg. 
It's good to question your first impressions and responses, but once you have, go with what works. You can hold yourself up to others and compare all day, but you will not become your best by simply emulating those who have done what you want to do. You have to find your own path because we're all very different people. I wanna further emphasize my sense of inner peace and I'm sure it's not going to do it by slowing down. There's no reason I should be ashamed of this, even though most religions, minimalists, and shrinks would tell me differently. Watch out, world. My conscience is clear and I'm ready to get down to business. You just listened to the post titled, I'm a Bit Slow by Colin Wright of exilelifestyle.com. Thank you to Colin. Really important that you find your own way. That's the purpose of these podcasts, hearing different angles so you can pick and choose. And he does have an update to this post. I'll read that for you. Update, November 25th, 2016. It's interesting looking back at periods like this because today I self-identify as someone who takes to new projects and things I wanna learn somewhat ponderously. This is the consequence of having had all the time in the world for all intents and purposes for many years. I've come to realize that although I can still leap when needs warrant doing so, I'm typically far better off working intently rather than intensely and iteratively rather than trying to make every day into some kind of revolution. So there you have it. Hope your week is off to a great start. Thank you for being here and listening to me and for subscribing to the show. And I'll catch you next time where your optimal life awaits.